If there is one thing that this episode of Dororo makes very clear, is that it's very believable on what is happening to Haya and his change, his rampage. It's something that Game of Thrones wasn't able to do with its eight seasons, with years of build-up, basically. It wasn't able to truly accomplish with its final episode. So, I'm really happy with just how believable Haya's change is within this episode, and it's scary, honestly, because it's something that has been building up for a while, it's something that's been established since, like, the beginning of the story, and as I've already talked about, if you were in Haya's situation, and everything was stolen from you, I, I want to be honest with you, if you eventually came to terms and knew what was stolen from you, and what was yours, you probably would be like him, you'd probably go on a rampage as well, because it's still rightfully yours, regardless of the moral situation and all that, it's still yours. They had no rights taking your body before they can survive. It's not. It's not their right. And just seeing his slow descent into just rage and madness into this very point is believable. So I really love this episode. It's a good way to show Haya's development, his descent into just to true darkness, and how he truly has become a demon. So, let's get right into it. What does this episode perfectly show? It shows how dependent of Dororo Haya is. Haya depends on Dororo so much, when Dororo is taken from him, he loses it. He breaks. This is something that was already shown on episode, I think, 1920 or whatever, you know, a few episodes back when he could not say Dororo when she was drowning. And he got really angry, and then he realized that something he gained on his journey, he didn't want taken away from him. And you can see how that has actually changed him quite a bit. It's become a very weird relationship between the two. Haya depends so much on Dororo, if Dororo isn't there, Haya probably would just break. He would just completely shut down. And we kind of get to see that within this episode, with the very person that's grounding Haya to, as a normal human, some, some can say, with Dororo being gone, that's kind of like a stopgap, Haya is able just to fuel and go, go loose. He just goes on a rampage, full rampage of carnage, because... He wants to protect Dororo. He wants Dororo beside him. So that is the scary part about this. Just his over-dependence on an individual. And you can already imagine, if he was to realize, let's say, if Dororo was to die, Haya, he would probably become the biggest monster that the world has probably ever seen, at least in the Dororo-verse. Because that's just how much he depends on him. That's the scary part about this. But... Getting one step further, though, seeing Haya go through an endless rampage throughout this episode, riding on a horse, the Pell Horse, which is obviously symbolic for death, and just trying to wipe out everyone in his way. Anyone that stands in his way will die. That's basically what this episode wanted to showcase. If you get in front of his objective to save Dororo or to gain his body back, you will die. The question is, how far has Haya gone? How far has he fallen? Has he fallen to a point to where he would even harm Dororo to get his body back? Which one does he weigh over the other? That is the big question now, because that's something that's really going to play a major part with his mentality, if he can actually come back from how far he has fallen. Like, will he be able to make a choice? Will he continue this new path, this path he's taking? Or will he choose Dororo and try to put the pieces back together and be what he once was. That is the question. You see, it's kind of symbolic in a way. The more he gains back his body, the less human he becomes. It's like he's shattering as a person. His very soul, so to say, or his mind, is shattering into pieces while his body is starting to reform. Like I said, symbolic. And I do like the depiction of that in the way this series has tried to show that clearly with Hai and Dororo's relationship. But, anyways, let's talk about that final scene. Tohomaru and his two retainers gain new body parts, limbs, eyes, etc. It's a very dark moment, and it's honestly probably one of the darkest moments of the series, because just the message of it. 
as we know, Haya, he is the one that technically took from his brother and his brother's two retainers. He took their, each individual arm, and then he took his brother's eye. And the final scene where you see Tahomaru stand before Haya, and you see him open up his eye that was supposedly gone, and you see the color difference and all that shading, it's obvious that it's Haya's eye. And then you see the mark on his forehead, which is what Haya created, also opens up to reveal another eye, which shows that the two eyes that had been taken away from Haya was placed into his brother, Tahomaru, which is just super messed up. And then it doesn't just stop there. The two retainers, you have it to where the, the arm that was severed by Haya, they gained Haya's arm as a, a, you know, to use as a limb. So it's just extremely messed up. He is literally having to fight two or three people that have his body parts, legitimately using his body parts against him. And so when he sees these individuals and how they're basically demonic body parts, he's like, those are mine and all that. It makes sense why he would be very angry. Honestly, they kind of sign their own death sentence because of just donning Haya's body parts like that. Now, to kind of analyze that scene, though, there's a couple things that most likely are going to happen. I have a feeling that however Tohomaru and his two retainers got those body parts, they obviously had to make a contract with the final demon, the 12th demon. And because of that contract, it makes you wonder what was the, you know, I guess the terms. Like, they were given body parts, which are obviously, they belong to the demons, but for the one demon to have it and loan them out, there must be a cost. Most likely the cost is Haya. Getting Haya back and giving him to the 12th demon. That's probably the cost. The question is what happens if they're not able to fulfill the terms of the agreements. That is the question. Will the demon take from all three? Or will he take matters into his own hands? See, that's the major thing. And I want to kind of point out something. Is that with them now being technically under the control, like they were given body parts from the demon, something tells me that Tahomaru and his two retainers are actually not themselves any longer. I don't think they're necessarily alive. I feel like the demon, the 12th demon probably controls them, probably is behind the scenes and all that, and now manipulating their very souls itself. So, I feel like they're not even their selves anymore. I feel like, at this point in time, Tahomaru and all of them, they're pretty much dead. They're, they're no longer alive. And I feel like the final demon is actually just in control of their bodies, and it's not really a fight between brothers anymore. I, I think that's kind of what is happening here. Now, moving on to the other segment of the episode, we have a little bit more characterization given to the mother. The mother of Haya and Tahomaru. The mother is a very complex character for this story. She is someone that we know, she technically is like, she gave up on Haya. As someone that was the wife to the lord of the land, she's like, you know, I want to suffer with you, but I cannot give you your body back. That's basically what she said to Haya many episodes ago. And it was very messed up. It basically showed that she would do it again. She would allow that to happen again. She would allow Haya to have everything taken away from him. So in that moment, she fell technically as a mother. She was a failure. And she basically abandoned her child. And when you see her in this episode, you get to see how she's very conflicted. She helps out Dororo. And we can see that she has two sides to her. She has a mother's side and the wife's lord side. Obviously, she chose the wife's, you know, the wife's side to be, you know, the lord, like, next to him and all that and help him out. But the thing is, is that you can see that there is a lot of regret. She holds a lot of regret within her soul, something that most likely Daigo doesn't even have, and she is constantly pained by it. And she even states within this episode, if Haya walks up to her and he wants to put an end to her, she will not blame him, because she had it coming, basically. She would not hate him or even try to stop him, because... She basically admitted she deserved it. She failed as a mother, and she would deserve everything that's coming to her because of what she did for 
her land. So it makes her an interesting character, and honestly makes me feel like I just don't want to see her die, but she probably is. Before everything is said and done, I do believe that she will die along with Daigo, and probably majority of the land as well, and as I said a few episodes back, most likely Dororo and her inheritance will probably be what has to save the land. All the money will probably rebuild the land and allow it to prosper after just the devastation of what High has caused and, you know, the demons. But yeah, overall, I think it's a good episode. It did a good job with just establishing the descent into madness with Haya, and just, can he come back from it? That is the question I think many are going to have after watching this episode. Personally, I think the only way he could come back from it is if he chooses Dororo, but there's a very likely possibility before everything is said and done, Haya is going to die. It's possible. So, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And with that, Chibi out.